Happy Monday morning, everybody. Here we are starting our week off right in God's Word together in prayer um, and still for a while yet in God's creation. Um, blue skies, dark clouds, really dark clouds coming in. Um, who knows what we'll find out. We might get rained on. We'll see. Um, today, uh, we're going to do a little bit from my devotional texts from this week and a little bit maybe touching again from uh, what we talked about in church at Redeemer this weekend, which is about truth still. And, and always good to talk about God's truth and the importance of truth and how truth will set us free and how amazingly true that is. Um, and so we're going to start off in a, in a letter written um, within the book of Acts and a letter from one Roman to another. And um, it's kind of intriguing to me, and uh, we'll just see where God takes this. Uh, but uh, it's the governor or uh, the Roman official in Jerusalem, and he's shipping someone off to Caesarea, uh, not too far away, but under guard. And, and this person was so um, um, dangerous or so uh, upriling the, the, the people that uh, they had to send um, uh, hundreds of of regular men and, and like 200 soldiers and 70 cavalry and 200 spearmen uh, to make sure that he got away, um, he, he was transported there safely. And you may know that that person was the Apostle Paul, that crazy guy. Um, isn't that interesting? The Romans are giving him an escort of um, some uh, 400, nearly 500 troops, and uh, those troops travel a, a day's travel, and then they send them on with a the cavalry. They even give them a mount to get there. And this is the letter that is sent with him. Um, and it is um, from Claudius Lysias to Felix, Governor Felix. And uh, here is what it says. This man, he's talking about Paul, was seized by the Jews, and they were about to kill him. And this isn't the first time Paul's been through that. You may know from Paul's journeys that the Jews have tried to kill Paul many a time. Um, the weather has tried to kill him. Ships have tried to kill Paul many a time. And um, so this is just one of the more recent accounts. And, uh, but I came with my troops and rescued him, for I had learned that he was a Roman citizen. And that caught my attention. I'll finish the letter, but just think about that. He is being saved because he's a Roman citizen. I wanted to know why they were accusing him, so I brought him to their Sanhedrin, which that account of Paul going to the Sanhedrin seems just crazy to me because these guys uh, that were rescuing him from these uh, Jewish people that were angry with him um, bring him right back to the heart of the, the, the hornet's nest itself. And, and then Paul riles them up and they're already riled up and fighting with each other and stuff. And, and um, it got even worse. They thought he was going to get torn apart there. And it was terrible. I found that the accusations had to do with questions about their law, but there was no charge against him that deserved death or imprisonment. When I was informed of a plot to be carried out against the man, I sent him to you at once. I also ordered his accusers to present their case to, against, uh, to, to you, um, their case against him. And so now the scene has been set. Paul has been nearly ripped apart a few times in Jerusalem, which he kind of knew was going to happen. That was prophesied before he even went back to Jerusalem on his journeys. And there was a lot of tears as people and churches that he was visiting kind of knew this might be the last time they saw him. And he goes back to Jerusalem and his fellow Israelites. And of course, he was a Pharisee of Pharisees. And he was even holding the coats of those that, were trying to, that did stone Stephen to death, the first martyr we uh, kind of account for. Um, but even these men, now with the change, the conversion on the road to Damascus, were angry with Paul. And so um, he had uh, kind of the people that he was serving had kind of cried and, and let him go because God was calling him to that. The, his uh, former brothers and um, in, in the ministry of the, the Pharisees and the, and the Jewish uh, rulish, uh, religious leaders uh, kind of turned their back and almost want to tear him apart. Um, in all of this, what saves Paul? In this letter, it seems to indicate, and in the stories, like he is about to be imprisoned and whipped and beaten, and Paul's like, oh, by the way, are you supposed to do that to a Roman citizen if you haven't proved anything guilty, haven't been put on trial yet? And they get really freaked out because they were not supposed to. 
And his jailers talk about, well, I had to pay a lot of money for my Roman citizenship. And Paul's like, well, I was just born this way, which is kind of a low key um, flex of the fact that he is not some uh, naturalized citizen in the Roman Empire. He is a true Roman. And there was special considerations for Romans. And his citizenship saved him from being torn apart. It saved him from the flogging at the hands of Roman soldiers. It even gained him about 500 armed men to carefully escort him when a murder plot is, is uh, staged against him. And it's, it, you read this, you could say, man, that is, that's hard to take. Like, because we kind of wish that um, God, when we became um, followers of Christ that all of this stuff would go away, that, that the God of the universe, the God that could totally take care of all of this stuff so easily would do just what the Roman government and the Roman military leaders were doing for Paul. We wouldn't have to wait on the secular or the Romans. They, that God would just like put a hedge of protection is a, is a common phrase. He would just keep us from all the problems of life. Wouldn't that be awesome? And as Christians, we've resigned ourselves, and, and the crazy thing is, in some ways, we're kind of excited. At least Paul was talking about that. Peter has talked about that. Other early Christians were saying, well, may I just suffer as Christ suffered. We crazy Christians, um, wouldn't it be great if God would just save us from everything, but he doesn't. And in some ways, we go, oh, Lord, may I, may I suffer with you. May I, may I walk the same road you have? Now, some of us do that. I know a lot of Christians are just like, oh, I can't take one more thing. I'm so tired, God. I'm so tired. Please save me. Please just take all this off of me. And sometimes God's answer to that is, oh, dear child, you need this because you're getting stronger and stronger. And after this one, you're going to need one more because something bigger is coming. But when that big thing comes, it won't feel terrible because you've been strengthened. You've gone through the refining fire. But in this letter from Claudius to Felix, you kind of go, God, why can't you treat us like the Roman government did to Paul and put this huge bunch of protection around him? and uh, then um, keep him safe from all his enemies and, and, and let him just kind of cruise on and, and even put him in a place where he's even able to do some of the work for God, where he got to witness to the, his uh, house arrest people in Rome. But we know as Christians, and this isn't something that I have to tell you, right? But we just know that that's just not the big picture for us. And it's probably not a big picture for us because, um, as we've heard over and over again, this is not our home. Uh, we are in but not of this earthly place. And so, um, of course, this earth is going to start rejecting us. We're, we're kind of like, what's going on? This is a sinful world. And as we are forgiven in Christ, as we are um, transformed in his blood, as we are told the truth, the truth sets us free. And in some way, we're like this good cancer. Can cancer be good? Where this sinful world tries to reject us and this sinful world thinks that we're here to destroy it. And in one way, we are. As God is going to destroy this world and make it new. And those that believe in him and those that know the truth will be set free. And we want as many people to know the truth as possible. So this sinful world and Satan is fighting against us constantly. And um, that's why sometimes we get a little nervous when things are going too smooth. We wonder, are we being too complacent? Is Satan going, well, I got him right where I want him. They're not fighting anymore. They're just enjoying the secular world that we've put them in. Some of the lies that we heard from Pastor Coughlin um, in his sermon that the world tries to teach us, you know, follow your heart. Well, your heart will lead you comfortably into the sinful world. Uh, be true to yourself. Well, yourself wants to just live in the sinful world while the spirit within you, the spirit God is calling, is rejecting this world. Um, and God has called them out of this world. So here's that that tandem, right? Like um, the Romans were protecting Paul. And every time Paul would start talking, he would start telling about Jesus and there would be more to protect him because 
the world was trying to kill him, try to get him to silence. Like the scripture reading that Jesus was talking about this morning, where he talks about, you know, you're Abraham's descendants. Um, you guys, uh, you believe in me and, and the truth will set you free. And they say, we're Abraham's descendants. We've never been slaves, which is a complete lie. They were slaves so many times. Maybe those people exactly weren't. But even at the time of Jesus, they were under Roman rule. So Jesus knew that they were blind. They were lying to themselves. And he was the truth. But he also saw that they were not listening to him. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to kill Paul. This world wants to kill us, or at least silence us, or make us complacent or apathetic. But God has called us to something greater. God has called something bigger. God loves us. And, and uh, isn't it amazing when we suffer, when we struggle, when we work together and we see progress and we see God working in amazing ways in the weirdest situations, we just go, wow, that is better than anything. That is better than a life without bumps, and bumps or troubles. My video just cut out on me. Maybe it's giving me a hint that I should cut these down in size. Maybe you guys would agree with that, and I probably should agree with it too. But sometimes you just get so excited about God's Word. Um, so I'm going to wrap this up today. And, and uh, <clears throat> as we just close down thinking about where we're at in this world and, and how we may be jealous of Paul with his protectors in the Roman government. And we may not always understand all the struggles and troubles that we have to go through. Um, but we do know that our God is with us and our God is leading us through it. So this week, um, I pray for your struggles and your troubles, Lord, uh, that he would watch over you, that, that God would, would protect you and care for you and show you, open your eyes to see why you're going through that stuff. Um, there's always going to be stuff. That's some classes that I'm in right now. There's always stuff. I mean, there is always stuff. Um, I do think there's two ways to to let that stuff not have as big of an effect on you. One is to just go apathetic and embrace the world and and then the stuff will calm down. It won't be perfect and you will be struggling in other ways, but, but that will reduce some of the stuff. Satan won't go after you quite as hard and the world won't be fighting you so much. The other way is to embrace what God is doing in your life. Embrace the stuff that God is doing. Embrace him as he takes you through that stuff. Because in that stuff, he is building you up to make you stronger. And I will tell you one thing for sure, is I look at my own life and I know that a lot of things that were have crushed me um, not too many years ago don't really feel like much of a bump in my life right now. And uh, it's funny, some of the small things that do, do frustrate me and that sort of thing, I'm not perfect, no one is, and we're never going to get perfectly comfortable or, or powerful or strong enough to get through this stuff. But, but God is with us, and God is refining you and strengthening you and caring for you, and he is going to help you so that in the future, the stuff that struggles makes you struggle now, um, it won't be as big of a struggle as we rely on God more. That's how we do it. So Paul had the Roman government that wasn't necessarily his, um, his desire. He knew he had God first. The Romans were just helping him continue his missionary journey and share Jesus' love with more people. Um, we don't have the Roman government. We barely have our government sometimes and maybe our government won't be working um, by the time you uh, actually watch this. Um, but we, we barely have our government sometimes. We do have Jesus every single day, every single second, every single moment of our lives. And he is with you. And um, he is not taking you out of the struggles, but he is taking you through the struggles. He is not um, making your path completely level, but he is giving you the strength to climb the mountains, to navigate the hills and the valleys, and to swim the oceans. Um, that's what our God does. And he makes us stronger every day to do it. And it is a huge, huge blessing. So this week, as you navigate this world that you guys are in and are caring for that, um, Lord, I pray that he shows you his presence with you and that you feel that love and strength growing, that you take time to head, take stock and say, wow, God, you have brought me somewhere. I bring that up a lot in this because I think we need to remind ourselves that God is working in our lives and he is making you stronger. And uh, <clears throat> on those days where you're just like, Lord, I just need a, a break. Um, who knows? Maybe he'll give it to you. 
or maybe he'll just give you that peace so that in the midst of the storm you feel like you're having a break even when everybody else around you might say he's they've never had a break they're just totally constantly in struggle god works in awesome ways so enjoy that um, you have a god that's above and beyond he is the truth and he is setting you free setting us free and may we embrace that freedom as we get stronger every day in Christ and together. Uh, let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you are our truth and you are our strength. Lord, you set us free. Uh, Lord, this week, help us to navigate the struggles of this life, giving you thanks for the persecutions that make us stronger, but also thanks for the peace when you give it to us to give us rest in the midst of our struggles. Uh, Lord, we pray. Um, Lord, we pray that that uh, this whole world, we may have the courage and the strength to share you with this whole world and your great love. Um, Lord, even if that means that this whole world and Satan fights against us stronger and our life does not get easier but harder, Lord, give us the courage to pray. Open our mouths, open our lives. Help us to share your truth and your love with everybody we see and make a difference in this world, even in this world that is really fighting against us, Lord, because you fight on our side. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful week. Enjoy this time. And uh, I pray that God gives you both peace and challenge this week and that you know and you feel his presence with you. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you next Monday.